Hey guys, welcome back to the Gamers Attic Show. I am your host, Player One, and I'm here with Ghostbusters Chris. Right. Hey, baby. And I am really excited today because today I'm here with the man of the hour. I'm here with Bogey's Corner, none other than Captain Bogey. Okay, guys, so if you guys are ready. Oh. Oh, man. Okay. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Where are you? Uh, setting up security protocols for season two since we're. This is the biggest t season that we have yet. And I don't sure. want to have a problem like we did with season one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Security protocols? Yes. About you know, right. glitch, a certain scorpion that almost glitch. stung us. Yeah. No, no, no. Everything's safe here. Well, well I know, but I checked. So oh. we're good. And I had my guitar, you know, doing you know protocols and checkups just to make sure. Awesome. Good job, okay. man. Thank you. I do Thank feel you. safe for now. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, and the gamers addict fanatics, welcome to Bogey's Corner! I am your host, Captain Bogey. So today is February 9th. 2019 and we are live right i'm alive you're alive he's alive everybody's alive yes, yes, yes. okay so this episode is number 10 and it's called bogey's top 25 toys of the 1980s how excited wow. are you guys oh, very good. you guys were there right yeah so, indeed huge shout out to my boy player one for putting the gamers attic show together and giving us a platform and to the rest of the tja gang thank you guys for being here all right, so what is Bogey's Corner about? This is my platform, my outlet, where I share my experiences and my passions from the 1980s growing up as an adult. So since the 1980s, I've been a, vi uh, I'm sorry, a casual video gamer, comic book collector, toy collector, movie buff, and collector. So I've done it all. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys here have done the same. So Bo Bogey's Corner's other goal is to introduce, educate, and reinvigorate the youth of out there, and also some of the OGs to bring us back to those times. So, now, uh, let me go ahead and share with you guys some of the things that I've covered. I've, uh, in episode one, Pac-Man, episode two, Metal Gear Solid, episode three, Max Payne, episode four, Minecraft, episode five, Donkey Kong, episode six, Resident Evil 2, episode seven, Driver 2. In episode eight, I changed it up a bit. I went ahead and uh, went for the Halloween, Halli, Halli, Halloween theme. Bowie's top 10 scariest video games of all time. Episode nine was growing up with Stan Lee. And that was, oh, yeah. uh, that, that was a very interesting one to really get to know the man behind. Like, it's probably uh, affected all of us here in the way we grew up. That was That's quite it. special yes, episode. <laughs> so today I'm very excited again to bring you guys in the time that we grew up, the toys of the 1980s, and there were hundreds of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the top 25 that I feel are on my list. But before we begin, I have a little gift here for player one. Uh, hopefully you can use this as a bookmark and a pen, and of course it's decorated in a whole bunch of video game uh, logos and so forth, so hopefully you can uh, use that. Wow, And uh, this. Make it an official uh, TGA item that you're gonna enjoy. So in what uh, Warp Zone world did you get this in? Uh, this one in, in, in one called Mart Wall. Mm. Yeah, decipher it, your, decipher it yourself. All right, so uh, now a few of these toys might have been made before the 1980s, but really the 80s was where, you know, these toys really exploded. So I'll be sharing those with you. Now, I didn't have all of these toys that we're gonna be talking about, but I did have a good childhood buddy called Sammy. And let me tell you, he got every single toy out there. He was so lucky. He had wonderful grandparents. And if you said uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, he would get them all. Uh, Ghostbusters, yeah. he'd get the whole set. So I had one of those friends too. Yeah? He oh, just seemed man. to have everything. What about you guys? Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah absolutely. No. God, the number. Man. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get into our TGA DeLorean. Look out. And go back in time. So are you guys ready? Oh, yes. yes. All right, so number 25 on my list, 
the Viewmaster. You guys remember the Viewmaster? Yeah. Nice and red. Now, originally it came out in 1939, and there's been 25 uh, different models uh, with thousands of titles and 1.5 billion copies have been sold of the reels. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, I, I could spend hours, you know, looking at these, uh, you know, at that time, and, and they were so sharp, especially if you had good lighting, it would look amazing. Number 24, Micro Machines. Oh, yeah. Micro Machines, yes. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Those were wonderful to play with. <laughs> Number 23, the Big Wheel, right? <laughs> you know, oh, e okay. Even though they were not uh, a rubber grip, right? Because if you went too fast, they would just slide on concrete. <laughs> but uh, the most exciting thing to do with the Big Wheels was, you know, going faster yeah. and then breaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice little drift. Oh, yeah. Number 22, the Rockin' Sockin' Robots. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Those were hours of fun, oh, yes. right? right. And, and you can really get competitive with that one. <laughs> Number 21, Speak and Spell. I love that. I mean, oh, you know, my God. You oh. know, that was... Well, you know, one to enjoy with. Any memories on that one? Was that was it? That was an ET. Yeah. ET oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Toy Story, right? Toy yes. Story had. Toy Story. Yeah. Yes. Thank that you. Was an, that was an expensive toy. It yes, was. it was. Yes. Type in his piece. Number twenty, the handheld football. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know if you guys remember that came oh, in green. Yes. It was about that. this this tall. And, yeah, and it, it was just fast. a little line, a little line that you would have to run across the field, but it was just exciting. And especially when you were playing with some buddies and you were trying to top <laughs> each other, that was a lot of fun. Number 19, Hot Wheels. Now, of course, Hot Wheels have been a long time, but listen, that was part of what, you know, we grew up with and, and the collection was amazing. There was just so many different cars. What was your favorite Hot Wheel, like designs? Well, actually, you know what? I got a Hot Wheel right here. And actually, let me show you guys, this is just a very uh, small collection that I happen to be able to uh, keep. And uh, this is pretty much what I have from my uh, youth. So, right there, front and center. One of my favorites, of course, is the G.I. Joe's, especially my man, Snake Eyes. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. With the wrestler there, remember they had, they had the uh, bigger wrestlers with the ring? Yes. And they had the ones where you put your thumb in the thumb wrestlers? It was just bent like this and you just fight with them? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had those two. Those were exciting. Uh, number 18, the A-Team Toys. Now the A-Team was a very popular show in the 1980s. Oh, we all all wanted to be uh, Mr. T, right? Or Face or, you know, all the other guys. So uh, they definitely, you know, they sold so many on that product. Uh, number 17, Mad Balls. You guys yeah. remember those? Mad Balls, they had all the different faces. Yeah. Sure. Number you know, 60, yeah. You mentioned that if you try to uh, buy some of those on, on eBay, ooh, ooh, they're very expensive. I'm talking about either like, like in the hundreds. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's very rare. Very, very good condition. Off. Yeah. Uh, number 16, the Kush Ball. Yeah, 1987, oh, yeah. that fun ball. It had 2,000 natural rubber filaments and it shot to popularity. Another great uh, toy that everybody enjoyed. Number 15, the Smurfs. And they had the, the cartoon show every Saturday morning. Yeah. Who didn't like the Smurfs? We yes. all like the Smurfs. Not the Smurfs. Yep. Yeah. Number 14, laser tag. I have laser that. tag. That, that really felt like we were in the 2000s, right? Advanced yeah. with, with yeah. that type of game, but uh, that was a lot of fun. It was better than the rival full time. Which one? Oh, full, full time. time, yes. We had a TV show, both of them had a TV show. Well, full time was live action, laser tag, and she had a cartoon Saturday mornings. Ooh. Yeah. Number 13. Thundercats! Oh! oh. The Thundercats. And you got some here. Man. Now. What's your favorite Thundercats? Oh, my man. Mine was Panthro. Okay. Uh, now, now, just to let you guys know, uh, this toy was very unique, especially for its time. Because if you, you had the ring, unfortunately, I don't, th don't think you have the ring. You go ahead and place it right up against the back, uh, the back and his eyes would light up. So, uh, oh, so yeah. Yeah, so to, you got the bad guy there too. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. The ring never fit, man. But you know what? Uh -huh. You know how it could probably work? <laughs> Take the one battery, put a little wire, solder some wires next to it, put it right there. Nice. That's it. So it was. Wow. So battery, 
Yeah. All right. We got to try it out right after we do this recording. Right. Let's try it out with Ghostbusters, Chris. What about that? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12. Now, <laughs> not that this was one of my favorite, but definitely my sister got into this. Yes. The Cabbage yes. Patch Kids. Oh, my goodness. oh, oh that was yeah. huge. The Praise. Absolutely did. Came out in 1983. Uh, Xavier Roberts began, began selling these individually, but then Coleco got wind of it, and they went ahead and got the licensing. So they went ahead and started selling these things, and let me tell you, uh, the parents were knocking down the doors of to mm -hmm. toy stores everywhere to yeah. get their hands on one. I mean, it was pandemonium yeah. when you know it was Christmas time, and the Cabbage Patch Kids was the hot item. Yeah, and there was one crazy thing that happened. Uh, a lot of the toys were being bought by a lot of people that were taking <laughs> they're taking the uh, birth certificates yes. and using them as real birth certificates. Wow. And that was something very unique about the Cabbage Patch Kids that they came with their own certificates. So, you know, kids at that time, well, especially, you know, the, the girls, I mean, they would just love it, you know, like it was their child. Yeah, right there. And, and very unique, there, there were hundreds of different. Number 11, the Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. Came oh, yeah. coming out in 1988, uh, and it was based on the Ghostbusters movie. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Since you're into Ghostbusters, uh, you know, you know, what toys did you have at that time, and how did they enjoy? Yeah, I had Ghostbusters at that time too. Yeah. Um, besides that, I mean, I mean, I actually had a bunch of the different versions. I had one of the originals. I had the scared, the, the Ghostbusters get scared. I had the slime ones. I had some of the ghosts. Um, I never got the vehicle or the. Uh, I never got the Ecto or any other vehicles or even the the firehouse. Um, but um, I mean, at that time, my mom was a single parent, so two kids couldn't really sure. get much. But I did have a lot of the toys like Thundercats, Silverhawks, the Visionaries, you know, G.I. Joes, and all that stuff nice. that, you know, we could share and play with. But, awesome. Yeah. Well, especially if you have another brother, you guys can yeah. always right. share no, toys. So that was another one that we tried to get. Ooh. But yeah, I have one that I have two now. Nice. You know, for the, the original one and the one from uh, Netflix. Wow. All right. So, coming in at number 10. WWE wrestling figures. They came out in 1984. They were eight inches tall, made of solid rubber. So, uh, and they were accurate in appearance, but of course they did not have no articulation. WWF. WWF, yes. Yeah, WWF, you see? This <laughs> man got me saying WWE already, forget <laughs> it. But uh, yeah, and, and I actually have here one of the smaller versions. Yeah. And again, yeah, the articulation is uh, not that much. Yeah, they're just saying that pose or whatever. Uh, exactly. Is that Big John Studd over there? Yeah, Big John Studd. Okay. But you know what? Even without the articulation, you, we were still so imaginative and we would just have matches regardless. And yeah. like the ring was funny because you just pull them down and jump off there the ropes. There you go. The ring was huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And number nine, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, they man. came out with their toys, 1988, and it was based on the 1984 comic book. Uh, so far, 30 million have been sold worldwide. 10 figures with vehicles and accessories. Of course, you got Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, and Leonardo. So that was a lot of fun. I remember the comic book, you know, that's what came out first. Yeah. And of course, you know, they're always gonna try to make whatever money they can, so the toys came out and yeah. that of course was a hit. Now you know that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures that came out originally, the first line, they had soft heads. Mm. Rubber like rubber. And those are really rare nowadays. Yeah, so if you nice. find one, they're worth a lot more. And also if you and also if you had the originals. You see, they don't look anything like the cartoon because the toys were made right before the cartoon came out. Mm -hmm. It was supposed, was supposed to be part with the cartoon, but the the, the, the designers didn't have that yet, how the cartoon was going to be. So they look more like the comic book compared to the cartoon. Nice. Yeah. Come and get at number eight, of course, Star Wars. Now, the movie came out in 1977. Uh, the toy line came out in 1978, and over 300 million Star Wars action figures were sold. So, uh, you know, of course, I mean, even though it came out in the 19, late 1970s, but in the 1980s, you know we were rocking uh, all types of Star Wars. So that was definitely a big hit with us. And coming in at number seven, Mask. Yeah, Yeah, no, the cartoon was uh, amazing. And then of course the toys followed. Yeah, another and toy line that goes for a lot of money online. Oh, yeah. and that was a lot of fun. Now, my buddy Sammy, he's the one that had all of those. He had the whole freaking collection. But yeah, I used to love the fact that the 
I don't know if it was had mask. I don't remember the car too much. No. But I love the fact that each vehicle was two vehicles. My favorite was the motorcycle exactly. that turned into like a helicopter. Nice. Uh, because it was green, that was my favorite color. That was, I like it. Awesome. <laughs> and remember, mask. Who remembers what mask stands for? No looking here, no cheating. Okay. Mobile Armored Strike Command. With a K, Command. Mask. All right, coming in on number six. Transformers, oh, yeah. of course, you know you gotta be in that list. So they're robots in disguise, there were two toys in one. Optimus Prime, the fearless leader of the Autobots, was always fighting against Meg Megatron and the Decepticons. And of course, the toy line, the, um, uh, the cartoon, was so phenomenal that of course, movies were made afterwards that it made, has made billions. So Which that was definitely My successful. favorite movie is the Transformers movie. Out of, all, very well out of all the Transformers, I, I love that movie. It was very, uh, very dramatic, huh? For sure. <laughs> all right, so now if you can go ahead and play the second folder, we're gonna go ahead and, and start hitting. We're at number five. So we are going to count down the five, four, three, two, and one. And I have a little surprise now, right before you, we hit number do one. Do you remember why they killed off all the Transformers in the movie? No. They don't. Um, they did that because they were going to make newer Transformer toys. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Slicksters. So that's why they, uh... They tried to right. make the booms. Okay, so we're going so to... So here we go, yeah. And these, these you're going to play uh, manually. So, coming in at number five. Voltron, the defender of the universe. Now, this came out in 1981. Uh, and if you guys remember, there was the cartoon. I could not wait after school. I would get out at 3 p.m. to run to run home, and I'd be uh, clicking on Channel 5 so I can see all my favorite cartoons. And definitely Voltron was one of them. Now, if you guys remember, Voltron were five lions, and they would, uh, when they needed to, they would go ahead and unite into one large robot. And of course, they had the, that huge sword that just cut through everything. They saw it. Yeah, so uh, Voltron is my number five. Coming in at number four. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Now, remember He-Man versus Skeletor. So that was the battle they always had. And by the power of Grayskull. So that was where He-Man used to live. Did you ever have a Grayskull castle? I didn't, but my buddy Sammy did. I, I did, <laughs> I did. And I'm, when I find that photo, I'm gonna show it to you guys. I had the whole collection. Wow! Yeah, everything. And that was a huge collection, if you guys can see it, here. It was. Huge, immense. I had uh, just about every toy. My mom would go every week on her payday and buy me one wow, or two figures. So it cool. ended up... Uh, and they weren't cheap in that time. No, they were If you uh, think about it, even ten, a $10 uh, action figure at that time was quite a bit of money. And most of those are very popular nowadays. Like today, like if you go on the auctions, a lot of them, you know, sell them and they go for a lot of money. Yeah, nice. the Patty Collector actually had a bunch of them redone. They look amazing. They, do. So they look close to like the original toys, but even better. They even nice. have uh, in the lore, what's it, uh, uh, what's it called? King Grayskull. Mm -hmm. like he looks like He-Man with longer hair and nice. a sword had, like fur around his uh, shoulders and everything. Cool. Really cool. And, and then just the last uh, a bit of information on this one, the toys came out first then the cartoons follow. Yes. All right, coming in at number three, G.I. Joe, greatest American hero. Yeah. So this was G.I. Joe versus Cobra Commander. And uh, I mean, that Cobra. there was another another exciting uh, series of toys. And uh, as you can see, you know, I saved up, you know, to get my own little snake eyes. I also had the helicopter, if you can uh, go to that one. So, and this one also, I saved up to get uh, the, the uh, Cobra helicopter. And of course, my imagination, I could be, you know, coming up with stories for hours and hours of what was going on. Yeah. And actually, just to share with you guys uh, how, how far my imagination would go, I made this little contraption. Uh, I don't know if you could see it that well. Now, basically, this hook, I can just hook it anywhere. The, there's another metal hook that I would attach to my snake eyes and then with this rope, he can slide anywhere I yeah, want, as far as I want it. I do the so, same thing. He's having a clip with a hand sliding down. That's it. So imagination, rampant, going rampant. That was huge and, for me too, because I would play with them in like the bushes, and I would dig dirt and bury them, and 
Very it was good. like, I wouldn't do that nowadays. I collect these boys and I take care of them. But oh, one, right. thing, one thing that was interesting mm -hmm. was that you brought Snake Eyes over and he, you know, I guess over years of use, yes. he broke yes. in half. But the cool thing about these figures is that I'm going to show you is that you can actually uh, fix it. And I'm going to show, see like, it's broken here. And if I can just grab the other half here. It's got a metal, it's got a metal piece mm -hmm. in there, like a hook. I mean, I know you can't see it on the camera, but you can buy the rubber bands online. Yeah. And then you can reattach this toy and it'll be like brand new again. So you can so, tell that you know, cool. this was original and over time, I mean, you know, that yeah. the rubber that was holding the body together just disintegrated and uh, it snapped, but I still, I'm still gonna keep this for rubber. All right, coming in at number two, Rubik's Cube. And tell me who did not play hours and days and weeks trying to figure out, I, I could do it one color. That's it, I was done. Yeah. Did you ever do it? Did you ever figure it out? The whole thing? Yeah, you did. I broke the whole thing and then put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> so Rubik's Cube created in, actually originally created in 1974 by Arno Rubik's and uh, by 2009, it, up to 2009 it has sold over 350 million cubes. That's a lot. Yeah. For just a one, one simple looking item. Yeah. But hours and hours of, uh, yeah, of even, fun. And yeah, different types too. And um, I even had one that was called Rubik's Clock, which had like nine clocks and each one changed differently. You have to get them all to be it's like 12 o'clock, it was hard. Nice. All right, so before we get to my number one choice, I got some honorable mentions here. Now these aren't per se a toy, but uh, there were game boards, there were cards, there were uh, electronic toys, uh, game yeah. systems. So honorable mentions here, the Monopoly game board. Mm -hmm. Came out in 1935, but were we playing it in the 1980s? Yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah. Atari 2600, right? November of 1982, when that came out, hotcakes. The Garbage Pail Kids oh, Cards. Man. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. And that's coming right back now. Collectors are going crazy. They're making new ones. Yeah. They're actually yeah. making new ones. They have one of Trump on it, too. <laughs> now, who didn't have a BMX bike? Of course. Mm -hmm. 1985, in the same year, this popularity reaches peak. An international BMX federation was founded and they had world championships. So I remember having mine. I, I also started doing the, the little tricks here and there. Who, who knows the bunny hop? Where you lift up the bike. I was Still able to do that. Little bit. Little bit. Uh, wheelies. I could do a wheelies. Not, not now, but before, yes. Can I ask uh, you something? Yeah. What? There was this toy that I used to play with and maybe you know. It was a ball, like a basketball, and then it had a ring, like the rings of Saturn. Yeah, bop it. Not bop it. Not the bop it. Uh, oh. It was, you it, were it, wasn't, with it. it wasn't a basketball. Do you remember that? It was a kick. Yes. It was swinging around. And, and a lot of broken ankles came I, out of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was not a safe toy. No, I, was, I was never able to do it. Yeah. Skip it. I, 80s. No, I was going to skip it because it was, the skip it was the one where, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a ring you would and jump. you would jump it over. It had a count. Yeah, exactly. But it looked like Saturn and you would have to have the battle. And you would jump up and down on it, but you know what? Oh, that was really one of those unsafe toys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that okay. was not very well thought. I, I was thinking about something else. Yeah. If you guys know what that is, leave a comment on this video because I'd like to know. I forget the name of it again. That was really one of those unsafe yeah. toys and it came yeah. out of the market quickly. All right, coming in, uh, well, here's another uh, honorable mention the NES, Nintendo oh, yes, Entertainment System. Eight bits, but it was still fun. I mean, of course, that's all we knew. So, eight bits was you know, uh, advanced technology. Uh, the NAS came with the zapper light gun and the gyroscope with that spinning robot, so that was exciting. And then of course, the last honorable mention I'm gonna have here is the Game Boy. It came out in 1989. Uh, you, came a pretty, you have a pocket with entertainment. I mean, you know, that there was humongous. All right, so, yes. I actually have three other ones that were really popular that I mean, everybody kind of had one. They had shoots and ladders, with Oh, sure. They yep. had, um, what's the, what's the other one? well, I'll skip that one. But they also had, um, what's it called, uh, Simon Says. Oh, oh, Simon Says was? Oh, Simon, Simon, Simon. 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 Yeah, that, that was, was almost made it to my list, but <laughs> yeah. it's only 25. All right, one so, <laughs> this one I want to mention. Um, okay, because I got to mention from the 80s. The Sega Genesis. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis was huge. Sure, Michael sure. Jackson's Moonwalker. I remember that in 1988. I was like, whoa, that was huge. Yeah. All right, so before I get to my number one, 
I'm gonna ask the rest of the TGA crew here to share what their number one toy of all time that you know brings into memory there that they was that they were so excited that they were always playing with. So one man band, your number one choice. Believe it or not, you have it right there, and it's I have I remember having oh. this. And I used to be all the time doing this number. Ah, you know. Heck yeah. Yeah, this is my favorite toy. Absolutely. I'm surprised okay. when you saw it when you had it. I was like, oh, awesome. by far, I loved it. All right, Ghostbusters, Chris. Obviously, the Ghostbusters, like I mentioned earlier, I Ooh. had a bunch of the different type of figures and a lot of the different ghosts and stuff like that. Um, my cousin even had the little proton pack, the plastic one that I actually wore one year nice. for Halloween, but it rained that year, so okay. I couldn't do it. And um, yeah, I mean, that's the one that I had the most of the toys uh, from, but I did have a lot of um, memories with Thundercats and Voltron too. Cool. Player one. Uh, for me, Bogey, I would have to say it was the E-Man toys. I love the E-Man toys. Uh, like I said before, my mom would go every paycheck and she would go buy me a couple of toys. Wow. And the collection built up. That's a nice up. mother. Yeah. yeah. And um, I had Castle Grayskull and I had all I had Battle Cats. Nice. Um, it was just a fun time in my life where, you know, there was just no TV. I mean, nobody, I mean, we would watch TV and cartoons, but it wasn't about like Saturday social morning. media or anything. You had to play with your toys. Yeah. And it was just a, a very special time in my heart. For sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so coming in at number one, if you can go ahead and set up that folder, third folder. This is a toy that I would say really captured my imagination of creativity and I, I would play hours and hours by myself. And if I would have my friends, we would make stories and we would have a wonderful time. And I think you guys can relate. So my number one choice is Lego Main Street. Now I was very blessed in, uh, when it came out in 1980. My godmother got it for me for Christmas. Wow. Now this set is set number 6390-1. It came up with 548 parts and had eight minifigures. And the price that, uh, that it cost was $39.99. Uh, it came with a car workshop, a hotel, a popcorn stand, a tower crane, a convertible car, and a small truck. Wow. Uh, there were four construction workers, a policeman, a chef, a woman, and a man with a cowboy hat. Why? I don't know. So, and, and it contains scenes with uh, construction sites. Um, and like I said, the, my imagination went rampant. Uh, it did get reissued in 2003. So I can tell you that uh, Lego has definitely been, you know, you know, one of my mainstays uh, as growing up as a child. And of course, you know, uh, after that, you know, I would have other sets. So I, actually, I still have my original Lego still with me. And I think wow. it was uh, um, like when my son Giovanni turned five, I went ahead and let him play with him, and he loved it. Now uh, I have my uh, three-year-old uh, daughter Mia, and uh, you know she's already starting to play with them. So that is a toy that can be passed down from generation to generation. You know, you have quite a bit of toys. I think it's time for us to uh, sneak into Bogey's attic. Oh, wow! Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll come and bring it one day. Maybe I'll make an episode on Lego. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen. This was very exciting. Oh, I do have one more thing here. The Bogey Battle Bracket Bonus Trivia. Ooh. You guys ready? Yeah. Three questions. Let's make this quick. First question. On Christmas morning in 1980, when you opened your gift of the Atari 2600, what video game came with it? A, Pong. B, Combat. C, Space Invaders. So the Atari 2600 that came out in 1980, and when you unwrapped it, you opened it up, and it came with which video game? A, Pong, wow. B, Combat, C, Space Invaders. I know that one. All right? I, I, yeah, I wanna say Combat. Okay, Combat? Well, Chris? Man, it's hard. I'll, I'll say Pong. Okay, Pong, layer one. Combat. Combat, and the answer is Combat, yeah. yes. A, now, as a bonus follow-up, Atari 2600 later on, Came with another video game. Which one was that one? Off the top of your head, Pac-Man. Pac Very good. Right. So the Atari 2600 started coming out with the Pac-Man. Of course, you guys know one of my first loves. All right, and question number two: 
the G.I. Joe action figures that we grew up with in the 1980s came out in 1982. Now, when did the original G.I. Joes come out, the 7-inch version? A, 1973, B, 1963, or, or C, 1953? So, the G.I. Joe action figures that we grew up with came out in 1982, but they were based on the original G.I. Joe action figures, and the, did they come out in A, 1973, B, 1963, or C, 1953? Uh, one man say, band. I want to say 1963. Okay. Ghostbusters. Uh, uh, okay. Player One. So the GI Joe seven inch toy. Yeah, when did it come the, out? The seven inch one. Mm -hmm. inch. I, I I believe that I want to go one man. I think it was 1963 as well. Okay. So the answer is B. 1963. Yes. All seven inches of the GI Joe action figure at that time was created. Very good. Now we're coming to our third and last question. What is He-Man's real identity? What is He-Man's real identity? A, Prince Adam of Eternia. B, Prince West of Eternia. Or C, Princess Player One of Hialeah. So, what is He-Man's real identity? A, Prince Adam of Eternia. B, Prince West of Eternia. Or C, Princess Player One of Hialeah. Ghostbusters. Well, my first guess was uh, Princess Player One from Hylia, but close, close. I want to say Prince Adam. Okay, Prince Adam. Uh, I want to say, yeah, Prince Adam will return you. Okay, and Player One, what do you think? I think it's Princess Player of Hylia. So close, so close. But the answer is. A, Prince Adam of Eternia. Very good. All right. All right. So who won? Not me. I don't know. What whoever, do we get? Whoever was contesting the seven inch uh, toys. All right, guys. So uh, just want to give a quick shout outs here. So shout outs to Soy Families, Geo Master Player One, Yvonne One, 24 7 Lou, OMB, One Man Band, Ghostbusters Chris, Mega Man, Sergeant Hess. Alucard, Jerry the Wizard, all the TGA fanatics far and near, and all the Bogey's Corner fanatics. So this is Captain Bogey, and you just witnessed another episode of Bogey's Corner!